Welcome to 6.4 Applications of Linear Systems. Today our goal is that we can choose the best method for solving a system of linear equations. The past three sections we have learned three different methods. The first one is called graphing and that's when we drew both of the lines and saw where the lines intersected. That was the solution. And when we want to use this method, graphing, is when we want to have a visual display of the equations or when we want to estimate a solution. Graphing is not ideal normally um, because you, normally it takes a little bit longer and also there is a lot of room for human error. So those are the two situations that we would want to use graphing. Now substitution from section 6.2 we would like to use this when one of the equations is already solved for one of the variables, such as y equals x plus 2, because the y is by itself already. So we can easily just plug that in for the y in the second equation. Um, or when it's easy to solve for one of the variables. So in this equation, x plus y equals 3, it would be easy to solve for y. We just subtract x from both sides. So substitution was from section 6.2. Remember, it's ideal when one of the variables is already solved for or it's easy to solve for one of the variables. And lastly, elimination from the most recent section 6.3. We would like to use elimination when the coefficients of one of the variables are the same or opposites. An example of this would be 3x plus 2y equals 6. 3x plus 4y equals 10. As you can see, the threes are the same number. And remember, when the numbers are the same, you want to subtract to get rid of them. And when you have different numbers, or different signs, I'm sorry, different signs, um, then you want to add. And that is a review of what we've done so far. So here's the three different methods, and now we're going to see how they come into play in real life situations. So here we go. Example one, a fashion designer makes and sells hats. The material for each hat costs $550. The hats sell for $1250 each. The designer spends $1400 on advertising. How many hats must the designer sell to break even? Well, first let's talk about what break even means. Take a look at the graph on the side. Um, as you can see, you're going to have to pay for the material of the hat, and you're also going to have to pay for the advertising if you are the designer. But then you're getting money when you're selling them. So basically the break-even point you can see right here in the middle is when the income equals the expenses. So that means you're not making money and you're not losing money. You're right in the middle. So now, step one is to define our variables and write a system of equations. So let's let x equal the number of hats sold, and let's let y equal the number of dollars of expense or income. Now let's talk about expense first. Let's make an equation for that. Expense means the number or the dollars that you're spending, that you're losing basically. So y equals, now you're spending 550 per hat on the materials, so we're going to have 550x, and you're also spending 1400 on the advertising. So there's our equation for the expenses and the income. You are gaining or making 1250 per hat, so that means our equation is going to be y equals 1250x. Now, as I told you a little bit ago, the Break even point is where the income equals the expenses. So what we're going to do is use our substitution method and set them equal to each other. We are using substitution because both equations are already solved for y. So we're going to substitute in 
1250x for the y in the first equation. So that means we're going to have 1250x equal to 550x plus 1400. And you may have guessed it, we're going to combine like terms. So let's bring over the 550x using subtraction, opposite, operations. That leaves us with 7x equals 1400. One step, divide by 7 on both sides, and you get x equals... Since X is the number of hats, the designer must sell 200 hats to break even. Example 2. The local zoo is filling two water tanks for the elephant exhibit. One water tank contains 50 gallons of water and is filled at a constant rate of 10 gallons per hour. The second water tank contains 29 gallons of water and is filled at a constant rate of 3 gallons per hour. When will the two tanks have the same amount of water? Explain. Step one is to write a system of equations just like last time, and that involves us writing the equations, but first of all, defining our variables. We're going to use x and y for our variables, and remember, you just take a look at the situation and find what quantities are changing or varying. So x is going to be the number of hours the tanks are filling, and y is going to be the number of gallons in the tank because remember the y is always depending on the x and of course the number of gallons in the tank depends on how many hours the tanks are filling. So let's go ahead and write our two equations and each equation is going to be talking about one tank. So let's do tank one first. Tank one says that it's containing 50 gallons and is filling at a constant rate of 10 gallons. So in slope intercept form the slope is going to be 10 the rate of change, 10x, and it started off with 50 gallons. So here's our first tank, and now our second tank is going up by 3 gallons and starts at 29. Now, again, this system is easy to solve using substitution because both equations are solved for y, so that's what we're going to do. We are going to substitute 10x plus 50 in for the y in the second equation. So this is what it's going to look like. y equals 3x plus 29 and now the y is replaced by 10x plus 50 equals 3x plus 29. Combine like terms, bring the 3x over that means we have 7x plus 50 equals 29. Subtract 50, and we get 7x equals negative 21. And divide both sides by 7, and we find out that x equals 3. So our x value is negative 3. Now step 3 is to plug in the negative 3 for the x to find the y. So let's take the negative 3 and plug it in for either equation. And we get negative 30 plus 50, which equals 20. So the y value is 20 and the x value is negative 3. Last step is make it a coordinate point. So that is the point where these two lines intersect. Now let's take a moment and make sure this makes sense in the situation. Remember, x stands for the time, or the number of hours. And our x answer is negative 3. So let's think about it for a second. Does negative 3 hours make sense? The answer to that question is no, it doesn't. We cannot have negative time. That is not a realistic answer. So that means that this has no solution. There is no time where the tanks have the exact same amount of water. So that is what we're going to write down, and we will move on to the next one after that. Make sure you have the conclusion sentence or two written down. The solution is not realistic, so the tanks never have the same amount of water. Now let's talk about airplanes. 
Um, did you know that when a plane travels from west to east across the United States, the steady west to east winds act as tailwinds? So this increases the plane's speed relative to the ground. So the equation that we have here is air speed plus wind speed equals ground speed. So again, when you're going from west to east, a.k.a. L.A. to New York, the air speed and the wind speed are combining. So it's easier to go faster when you're going from L.A. to New York or some similar cities. Now, exact opposite is true. When you are traveling from east to west, such as um, Charlotte, North Carolina to San Francisco, California, the winds act as headwinds. That means it's going against the front of the plane. This decreases the plane's speed relative to the ground, and the equation that we're going to be using is airspeed minus wind equals ground speed. So the airspeed is subtracting the wind. The wind is going against the airplane. Therefore, it is making it harder to go faster. Now let's use this knowledge to work on example three. A traveler flies from Charlotte, North Carolina to Los Angeles, California. At the same time, another traveler flies from Los Angeles to Charlotte. The airspeed of each plane is the same. The ground speeds are shown below in the picture. What is the airspeed and what is the wind speed? So first, let's talk about west to east. And you'll definitely want to be writing small in this example to fit everything in. So west to east means we're going from L.A. to North Carolina. And remember, when you're going west to east, you have the tailwinds going with the airplane. So that means our airspeed and our wind speed are combining to give our total ground speed. So that means our equation is going to be A plus W equals ground speed. And it told us right here that the ground speed is 550. Now let's talk about the opposite direction. We're going to go east to west. That means we're going North Carolina to LA. And that also means when we're going the opposite direction, the airspeed and the wind speed are not combining. The wind speed is actually taking away from the airspeed, and that's going to give us the ground speed with the headwind. Remember, headwind just means that the winds are working against the plane instead of with the plane. And it told us right here, let's see, the ground speed going the opposite direction is 495. And we're still using our A and W, but this time it's subtracting. So here's our two equations. We have A plus W equals 550 and A minus W equals 495. And now let's talk about which method do you think we should use? Well, hopefully you've realized that the numbers in front of the A and W are just one. So elimination would be really ideal to use. So let's line them up. And the numbers in front are just ones. You can put them there if you'd like. Now let's get rid of the W's. As you can see, there's a plus and a minus in front of the W's. Therefore, if the signs are opposite, we're going to add down to get rid of the W's. We have 1A plus 1A, that's 2A. 1W minus 1W is 0, that's gone. And we have 550 plus 495, that is 1,045. 2A equals 1,045, divide both sides by 2, and you find out that A equals 522.5. So that means that our airspeed is 522.5 miles per hour. Now we need to find our wind speed, and we can use either of the equations to do so. Why don't we just take a look at the first one? Remember, once we find one of the variables, you just have to plug it in for one of the equations. So let's use the first one, A plus W equals 550. The A is now being replaced by 
Great. Sorry about that. And one step equation means we're subtracting 522.5 to both sides. We find out that our W is equal to 27.5 miles per hour. So now take a moment just to reflect on these different problems. We have used substitution and elimination today. We did not use graphing, um, but feel free to try those if you'd like. Uh, but these are the more ideal situations. And lastly, feel free to try the lesson check for the section. If you're stumped, you can wait until we do problems together during class. And make sure you completed the lesson check for the previous section, which was 5.3 day two. Thanks for sticking with me, and I will see you soon.